And Susan Feldman is a mixed media artist working primarily with found wood while also using a wide variety of other materials such as yarn, string, photography, and plexiglass. And apparently we have a show in town today. Her current series of work began as an inspiration from her mediation meditation practice and her yearning to rise up. By creating ladder-like frameworks and weaving various layers of wood, yarns, and imagery, she addresses the many perceived layers that are involved in the spiritual moving up process. What began as an exploration into that aspect of her spiritual practice over time branched out to combine her love of architecture and building and has led her into further construction of stru structural pieces that are both 3D sculptures, wall works, and installations. Curator Jill Moniz writes, Feldman celebrates memory by integrating photographs, drawings, yarn, and wood into assemblages of both form and content. Her powerful constructions of identity and imagination are conceptual, investigations of ideas, textures, and assemblies that narrate the intersecting loci. Loci of her relationships to family, art, and to the community at large. Susan was born in Los Angeles and attended Cal State University Northridge. She has a background in graphic design, art direction, and is also a DJ. Spinning only vinyl, very important. <laughs> She has exhibited in spaces such as Walter Maceo Gallery, San Francisco Arts Commission, Descanso Gardens, Craft and Folk Art Museum, Ground Space Project, and Off-Ramp Gallery. So you had, I have the old bio, you had the residency I did in have, Woodstock. No, I had a residency at the brewery. At the brewery. In November of 2016. Right. And in September of 2017, you have your Woodstock Birdcliff Guild of Residency. Yes. Help me in welcoming Susan. So, um, I was talking about my community and how great it was, and seeing Susan, and I remember seeing her work. And when I first saw your work, I saw like this confidence, this boldness, this freedom. That, let's say that I didn't have, I, or you know, and I just wanted some of that, you know. And I remember, like when I would look at your work, to me, I would see like these, I, I want to say stereotypical, like masculine practices with these hammer nails, like this, you know, a certain type of work. But then, at the same time, it was balanced with this feminine traditional practice of like knitting and threading, and it was like this balance, and I loved it. Um, and it seems like you bridged these two worlds for me. Um, and then I remember talking to you, and you were telling me about the wabi-sabi concept. Uh, and I was like, what's that, right? And then and you were telling me, and I wrote it down so I can you know, say it. The con it's a concept in traditional Japanese aesthetics centered on the acceptance of imperfection. It's derived from um, Buddhist teaching and characteristics, of, you know, roughness, modesty, simplicity, appreciation of natural objects. And I saw it on your work and I was so excited. Mm -hmm. And when we were talking about doing you know, this, I thought, ooh, we great balance mm -hmm. between the two of us. And I want you to tell us about your Thank work. You. I'm so excited. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thanks again for asking. Me. Um, how do I get it to come back? Come back. Okay, so um, uh, the current body of work that I'm going to talk to you about has been in the making for about five or six years. And um, what Lisa had alluded to in, the, in uh, my introduction is that really what uh, I've been meditating for a very, very long time, and about five or six years ago, my meditation practice just really kicked in. and came into my art practice in such a way that I couldn't ignore it. And what I mean by that is that I felt that every time I meditated, I felt like I needed to go up. And what came to me in those meditations is, well, how, how do I get, what's a good way to get up? And I felt like um, climbing up something, and, and how can I best um, explain that? And to me, um, I thought, well, if I just use like found wood, just very s the simplest of things, found wood, and use some string or some jute or rope, and I can wrap 
them. Let's see, I, I do it automatically when I start talking about it. Um, or build build ladder-like framework pieces and then add string to them. So the first pieces that I did, these were this was some installation in my then studio, is just I just kept making these like ladder-like pieces and throwing them on the wall. And whether they look like ladders or they're just one stick wrapped in jute. Um, it, it was a good symbolization for me of getting going up. And um, so I did, you know, a ton of them. And then I got to the point where I felt like, okay, now it's time to add color. And um, how can I best do that With, while still keeping the found wood ladder <coughs> idea? And um, what happened was, I, I, I'm not a sewer. <laughs> I don't like to sew, even. Um, and I don't knit. But I wanted to add color to these wood pieces. And I, wa and I thought, well, what, what's colorful and has texture? And it just kind of seemed natural that it would be yarns and colored strings that I would add in. And the way that I did that is that I built the structure and then I actually wove into the spaces in between the found wood. So these became pieces for me that were still ladder-like, uh, but incorporated color and texture. And um, I think that's where that mixture comes in of like the you know, the yin and the yang of like the, you know, I can grab a drill and my saw and get all yangy, and then when I want to switch over, I can do the weaving, and that made me feel balanced. And I think that a lot of my life is about balance. And um, just to touch upon the other aspect of our commonality is the fact that, like I had said, I have two grown young women, children, children, young women, um, one of who's here today, and um, and so I feel in many ways like I'm ahead of Kalita in the game of that. And one of the things that drew me to her at the beginning was to, to be able to tell her, look, there's light at the end. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. You know, and so that's so that's a balance. You know, that that also has the balance thing going with it. Um, so I made a bunch of these uh, that I call woven ladders. And um, there is more. Uh, and then I wanted to show my inspiration because um, this thrills me to no end. You don't even know. <laughs> when I'm seeing things like this, I have to pull over, I have to take a picture, as my husband can attest to. And it's, <laughs> um, it's, it's just to me, it's, oh, I, I, love the, I love the aspect of constructing. I love the aspect of destructing. Um, it's not so much about the finished building that I care about, but the insides, the inner workings of what's going on. So I use these types of imagery uh, to inspire me for what I'm building and making. Um, so as you can see, what, what followed next is, okay, what can I do with these ladders that, um, that I haven't done yet? And the next step seemed to be uh, make them 3D, make them sculptural structure, and I call them structures. And it's all, again, found wood, which um, is wood that I get from construction sites or destruction sites or that people give me or tell me about where I can go find the wood. And it really is a thrill. I can't even describe to you the thrill. Um, so that's... I hope that's coming across, because that's, that's what I get, I get off on. Okay, and then here's another one. Uh, this particular piece I call, uh, most of them aren't named, but this one I call Tunnel. Uh, most of the pieces that I make, I basically sit on the floor of the studio and just start gathering wood around me and just start building from the bottom up with my tools, my screws, my wood, hammer. Uh, and uh, this particular piece I did have a vision for, because... Um, uh, I wanted to be able to go up and then over. And I imagine that I'm like this big and that I can do all these things in, you know, within these pieces, within these structures. So for me, you know, I started doing this ladder-like thing on the bottom and then it was like, okay, now I gotta get over. And it, it seems to me that a lot of my work is about that. It's about like getting up, over, through, out of, 
Um, not that where I'm at is such a bad place. <laughs> it's not. But that I know there's other worlds and there's other places that I want to hit. And uh, so these, these almost become my vehicles to get to those other places. Uh, then, after building those structures with just wood, I started incorporating uh, the colored yarn and string into these 3D pieces to just to bring color and to just kind of flush them out a little bit more. This particular piece um, is called trebuchet, which I didn't even know what that was until somebody else called it that. And then, but it's a, a catapult. And, and, um, and it represents that to me in a weird way, too, because I can see yeah. up there that thing. And yeah. that, like, that, again, that could be me. That's just getting thrown over to the other side. Mm -hmm. So, um, Did you have yeah. an idea before you started that you were going to make something like a catapult? Or did it start one piece at a time until it changed into that shape and form when it came back? Um, How often is that, but, yeah, that but both. Uh, mostly I have no idea what I'm going to do. I started at the bottom building this like fence structure and then as I started putting pieces up to it I thought, oh, well, it kind of looks like that thing, you know? So like I said, I didn't know what it was, but that felt right to me as I was doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, that's where the Bobby song yeah. comes in. A lot of it <laughs> is just about, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't do studies of what I'm going to do. I, I usually don't have a clear vision of what it's going to be. I just kind of let it happen. And, and I'm okay with that. That feels good to me. Whereas for you, it makes you feel a little more nervous. Well, I usually have what I'm going to, like the vision of where it's kind of going to look like at the end. Mm -hmm. And it may change in the process, mm -hmm. but I kind of know, you know, this is what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. How do you know when you're going to, when you're completely finished? Is it just a natural that's life? A good, yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, because I don't know what it's going to look like beforehand, but somehow I know when it's done. You just know. Mm -hmm. Wabi sabi. <laughs> <laughs> um, and oh, there's a there's a detail shot of that piece, which I really love. I love how um, you know the yarn and the string. This is hemp, actually, and how it, it's got a real thick um, feel to it, like a cord, almost. And so it holds the weave really cool. And it just, like, things like that. Like, that's just, to me, that's a bite right there. Um, this piece um, was shown at the Craft and Folk Art Museum, and um, it's a piece that I really care about a lot, too. Um, I started making this little ladder, but on like four sides, three or four sides, and it just goes up, up, up. And then what I did was I strung, it, it, it hangs, but it hangs like, you know, maybe 10 inches off the ground, and under it is the same rope that's holding it, comes down and sits in a um, little coil at the bottom. And what I tend to do when I make these types of things with the string or yarn is I, I tend to leave something down at the bottom so that you can grab onto it, something to hold onto while climbing up. Um, so I guess there's like kind of a security in knowing that I can grab on and continue going up. I have a question. Yes. Now I love like these shadows that come off your pieces when you see more in, in some of these. Do you think about the light? Do you, before you like showed this, did you talk to the, you, the curator like I want the light to come from this point so I can have a shadow that looks like this? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love the shadows that my pieces make. They're never intentional. It's always like after I make the piece, then when we light it, it's like oh look at that. You know that's got a cool thing going on. So. Um, yeah, and you'll see in more of the photos, the, the shadow plays a big part, but it's always kind of a nice, pleasant surprise afterwards. I want to paint it. Yeah. I want to fill it. Yeah, yeah. Keep it there. <laughs> okay, inspiration number two. This is a house that uh, was a house that um, my best friend, one of my best friends, Eve, two of my best friends are here, my other one who's not here, um, they lived next door to this house that I was obsessed with for some bizarre reason. I don't know why. Just a funky little house. 
Um, one day I pulled up into my friend's driveway and saw that they were tearing it down. And I knew that an old woman lived there, and um, whose name was Florence, but I call her Virginia. So, I don't know why, but that's what it feels like. So her name's Virginia to me. And I ran over, I went next door, and I was like in ecstasy, walking around the crumbling, you know, kind of destruction of this place. And I started taking a bunch of photos and talking to the guys, and like I do, uh, you know, hey, is there any, you know, wood? Can I have some of this wood? And they always look at me like I'm nuts, and then I have to say I'm an artist and whatever. And so I grabbed a bunch of wood from Virginia, and I took a bunch of photos. And um, so uh, this kept me busy for quite some time. This is a detail of a piece that was done with Virginia's wood. Um, and I drew on it, but for the most part, it's wood from Virginia's house with imagery from Virginia's house. And um, I basically started making a bunch of pieces from Virginia's house. I kind of wanted to build her house in my studio, um, but I, at the time, had a small studio space across the hall, mm -hmm. and so I couldn't really do that, but, but I have a lot of her um, souvenirs. I even have the two from her address um, upstairs. So um, anyway, that, that kept me busy for some months. Well, I, there's more than wood there, though, right? There's other... And then there's plexiglass in there, yeah. And is there, there's, uh, it looks like there's lap, like uh, wire. Is that from... Oh, that's string. Oh, no. oh this? this yeah. No, that's part of a photography, a photographic image oh. of the fence that was built up around Virginia's oh. house. So what I do is I mix photography, paint, um, drawing, and things on, on the pieces themselves. And then um, I added the plexiglass to it as well, and sew through it and everything like that. You once told me something uh, about the plexiglass, about it being like these windows. Oh, yeah, or yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so before I was building these wooden structures and got into the found wood thing, for many, many years my art practice was um, involved using a lot of plexiglass, and I would layer the back of plexi with paint and collage and photography imagery and all kinds of other things, and, and, and um, have those pieces just speak for themselves. But they also had a very kind of voyeuristic quality. I, I always kind of would drive by buildings and see, you know, what's going on in there, and kind of wonder what's going on through the window. And so when I switched over to using found wood, I did that for a long time. And then I thought, oh, I can bring in my plexi because it kind of works like that. And um, when I found when I incorporated it into with my wooden pieces, it, it had the same kind of feeling of like being destroyed or being built. And then you kind of don't know what's going on behind there, what went on in that house, or what is going to go on in that house. So, so there's little stories that can go on, you know, inside the plexi, within the piece. And I like that. I like that, you know, you can kind of land somewhere and just be there for a while on the piece and not really get what's going on, but you can kind of see different things each time you look. Um, that's another piece of, from Virginia's house, that piece of wood. That happens to be a picture of Todd and Eve, my friends, that live next door to Virginia in an embrace, and then that's um, some of Virginia's wall, which we have. This is a piece of Virginia's wall. You can pass that around. Yeah, that was for stucco. And, um, and I just have that in my studio as inspiration. Uh, and I drew on the wood there. And then I kind of bring the string in as the last detail to just kind of wrap everything up, just hold it all together. Um, okay, so this is more of my structures where I'm incorporating the plexi. And again, this, this feels really kind of voyeuristic to me too, in a way, because it's, it's like a, a building, um, and yet there's different stories going on in each little section. Um, and I like that. <laughs> Uh, this is a piece, this has a history, um, this is a piece that was at the Craft and Folk Art Museum 
And, um, oh, hello ladies, just in time. Um, and this I call flat. Um, what, it, what it was was a big palette that my friend Melinda gave me when I was um, at my old studio at the Santa Monica Airport. And it, it's a, it sat in the corner for a long time and I really didn't have room in that studio to work on it or do anything with it. And uh, about a year and a half ago when I moved to this studio, I almost didn't take it. Um, but we had the truck and I thought, okay, you know, I'll throw it in. And it came and sat in my studio for a bit. And then when um, I knew I was going to be uh, showing at Craft and Folk Art, the curator, um, Jill, said, you know, oh, we'll get to work on that, you know, let's get that in there. And so I started working on it, and basically it's two-sided. And again, it incorporates the uh, plexi. I, I knocked out a lot of the wood slats, and I rebuilt other wood pieces onto it with the found wood. And plexi and imagery and on both sides. And then came in with um, colored rope and jute and tied it all together. And Jill had the idea of hanging it, um, hanging it, actually. It, it was um, anchored in my studio on, uh, from the top so it wouldn't tip over and I could work on both sides at the same time. And when Jill showed it, she said, I want it hung. And it was really a cool, powerful piece being hung because you could walk around it and you could, you could get air under it, you know? Um, and I think I have a detail shot. Yeah, there's a detail shot of it. So, um, as you can see, I, I use the plexi and I draw on the plexi and I drill holes through it so that I can put yarn and string through the holes in the plexi. I see ladders in it. It's like almost like your own building, your own architectural structure that you're creating. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, and this is like, like uh, this is like my apartment complex. Yeah. I was like, oh, and then you know, like, yeah, let's see what's going on in this house. Over here. Yeah. yeah, totally. And I and I like to just play around with the, the the plans of it. You know, like I'm scribbling. There's okay, we're gonna knock that wall out. We're gonna put in the stairs here, and then this is gonna go up three inches. And you know, I I like to do all that stuff. And and a lot of it you can't really tell what it is I'm talking about. And most of the time I'm not. I'm just scribbling directions to some engineer that's going to do it. <laughs> um, this is a piece that I uh, did um, around the time I was doing those woven ladders. And this is about 25 feet long. Uh, this was at a show I had at Ground Space. And um, you asked about the shadows earlier. This just was, we hung the piece across the top of the gallery. and. Uh, and then when we turned the lights on, we saw what, what it left. And it was like, oh my god, this is so cool. So, you know, again, it, yeah, it was not planned at all, but I really loved it. And um, so this is kind of acting like a ladder and a bridge connecting, you know, people and, or whatever, sides of the room. You were saying you found, you know, you find these pieces, it made me think, a little bit of like Noah Purefoy's work. Oh, Do you, are you influenced by him or that's any good. other yeah. artist? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, I um, I didn't go to art school, and so I'm not. I, I haven't been that familiar with a lot of artists. Um, I didn't even know who Noah Purefoy was until I started making this work. You know, I started this like five, six years ago, and then I found out about Noah Purefoy, and we actually went as a family to his place out in the desert before the show at LACMA and was blow, I was blown away as you can imagine after seeing I mean I, I was like who is this man I, I'm like you know my soul mate here <laughs> and so his work really speaks to me a lot um, and uh, also um, Martin Perrier who I also didn't know who he was and my friend at, uh, brought me a book of his one day and said, look at the, look at the ladders this guy builds. And I was like, oh my god, like the, we speak the same language. Um, I actually was fortunate enough to meet him in New York once. I went to a show of his, he was there, and I was like, oh. So I didn't ever get to meet Noah, but um, I know friends who did know him, yeah. Um, 
anyway, so that's that's that. Uh, inspiration number three. Okay. Uh, I could do my whole show could be just pictures that I've taken of what inspires me. This this is like I can't even. There's no words. Uh, look, I mean. How about the virus? This, uh, what? Fire escape? Yeah, no, but I mean, it's got everything. Okay, it's got this, my stairs, it's got my ladder, it's got color, it's got what looks like being woven things going up up there. It, it's it, it, string, it's everything. This is it. Actually, I should probably frame this piece in our house. That might be a good idea. Just call it, you know, convention center or wherever the hell it is. <laughs> um, so, there we go. Uh, this is part of an installation that I had done in a studio, um, uh, incorporating my ladder pieces. And there's the shadow that you speak of. Um, and actually, at I had a solo show at Ground Space, and the one the pieces that accentuated the the shadows were accentuated by I did draw on them on the wall and created like this alternative. Um, view of the piece by just highlighting the shadow and drawing all around it and stuff. So it gave it a lot of dimension. It was yeah. cool. There's so yeah. many cool shadows from the piece. And yeah. And this one reminds me of like Martin, oh, sorry, Mark um, Currier, mm -hmm. like his ladder piece. Right. And you know, right. this one for sure. Or like a, a spine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. A spine. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Vertebrae. Why don't yeah. you paint directly on the wood? We were talking about color earlier. Yes, I, I do now. And we've talked about this before. Yes. I um, At first, when I was very first working with this found wood, um, I didn't want to alter it that much. I kind of enjoyed... Uh, I actually didn't even want to saw it. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I did. <laughs> so, but um, I get, you know, off on... Here. This is a favorite piece of my wood, which I would happily pass around. Just look at that. <laughs> you don't want to paint. I, I don't want to paint. <laughs> <laughs> Kalina does what she does. <laughs> I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't want to mar it, so to speak. I wanted the naturalness of the grain to show through and the wear of it. Um, and then I started sawing to fit suit my needs and then um, I have added color which you'll see in some further pieces but yeah there was something just about the rawness of it that I, I really wanted to show through. Ah oh, okay this is just a whole other thing here with an installation um, at this is at Liz's loft at Liz's and um, I do drawings of course what do I draw? What? So uh, these are representative of wood pieces. There's like a woven ladder. And then these circly things kind of represent the string. And I actually do what I call a string wall. I, I did this on the wall where I just put in nails and I string a bunch of different colors of string around. And then I attach these graphite drawings to, to this piece. And it's down the stairway. That's why it's lit kind of funny. but. Um, Uh, oh, we're into installations, yeah. This is an installation that I did for Descanso Gardens. And um, it was a show called Woven. So um, they gave me the window, and I got to choose the color that I wanted. I was very thrilled about that. That was, like, exciting, because I wanted it to be this, like, intense blue. And um, uh, so you can't walk in here. You, you, you can see it from outside, or you can see it you know, in the gallery from two ends. And it was uh, just, I incorporated a lot of my woven ladders and, and the wood, and it was just really fun to make. I really enjoyed making it. And um, when I saw this piece, I was like, water in a fish tank. Yeah. <laughs> I see my water back again, and I see a yeah. ship and some sharks. I was like making it like, <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. Yeah. yeah, you're swimming right there. Oh, swimming. Yeah. Next yeah. To it. yeah. Um, yeah, this was this was fun, and that's a detailed shot of what's going on in there. I mean, it was just like a, 
a free-for-all. What I had in mind was um, when my kids were young and um, they, on St. Patrick's Day at school, I don't know if they still do this, but the, in kindergarten, they used to say, okay, you know, the, uh, let's go out for recess. And while they were at recess, the teachers would come in and mess up the room. And when they came back, the kids came back, it was like, oh, a leprechaun got in. Uh -huh. And look what he did, you know? So and, yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so, and I used to, after that build, with my kids, we'd build leprechaun traps and leave them on the front porch. <laughs> and then in the morning, you know, come out and see they had just, completely demolished and made a mess of the whole, the leprechauns had completely made a mess of the whole trap and gone berserk. That was our Christmas, right? That was, so that was, that was we right. Christmas morning. Right, waking up to see if we could catch the leprechaun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> damn, we missed him. And, uh, you know, and I would like leave little water drops on the porch, I remember. <laughs> so good, so good. Uh, so, anyway, this, so my vision for this window when, when I first was asked to do the show is, oh, perfect. I want to do a leprechaun trap. <laughs> and um, so that's what I was thinking about when I was doing it. And, and it was really fun too because the, the window space, maybe it's five feet, and I had to learn how to be, I was there for about a week creating it, and then I had to get out of there. <laughs> and then I had to close it off. So it was kind of fun like not to get caught in it, you know, like, like the leprechaun. Uh, that's another detail shot. It does look very nautical. Yeah, it does. Um, okay, so this is an installation at the uh, Craft and Folk Art um, Museum window, that the, the show that I was in um, called Work Over School. And I really enjoyed doing this project. Jill just gave me the window and said, do what you want. So I brought in a structure, you can kind of see it in this shot, and I built uh, some things here um, on the back wall, and I had it going. I had, I had, I needed a place where the string and the yarns could anchor and then go off. Um, so that's why I have those wood pieces in there. But mostly, it's all string and rope. And um, this is at night. It, she had it painted black, and at first I thought, mm, I don't know, it's not going to show up. Well, she did the right thing. I've told her since. <laughs> Thank you for doing it. Because it, it, at night, it really popped. And it was very exciting and fun and, and all that. I went to the show, and I remember thinking it glowed. Did you use any, oh, like, fluorescent? Yeah, I did, it actually. Like it was I used two different strings that were, there's one. It, it doesn't show in this slide, but that, that was like a fluorescent pink. And then there was like a fluorescent orange. And then just the way it was lit, it was just, really magical. It, it, I mean, I know I did it, but the lighting did a lot. <laughs> um, this is a piece that we have a member of the audience here that was involved with this with me, Jennifer. Um, I did a residency at the brewery uh, for a month, and um, a shoebox project, which is run by Christine Schumacher. And, um, so she emptied out this part of her space and let us work for a month in the space to create whatever we wanted to. Um, I, the night before, loaded my car with a bunch of my wood from, from the studio and drove down there, and then in the morning, took it all out, and there was like not a whole lot of wood, because I don't have a huge car. But, um, and I thought, oh no, what am I gonna do? I'm like, this is the found wood I have, and I need wood, so I decided that part of the, it, Part of the residency would be that every morning I would walk around the brewery and collect wood. Um, and it was a gold mine there. And Christine put the word out to the other artists that, you know, if you're getting rid of any kind of wood, put it out and Susan will pick it up. So most of the wood in this piece is from the brewery. And I really liked that, again, the community feel of it. Um, having them participate without really even knowing that they were these other artists by just giving me their wood or me finding it. Um, and it became like a treehouse kind of thing. We had envisioned sort of like a, just a, you know, free for all kind of Peter Pan, Swiss Family Robinson, you know, treehouse. And, um, and there's all the wood and then the, ropes and Jennifer does these mixed media pieces that she hung on the wall. There's, there's two more over here with drawings and photography. Um, 
imagery. So it was, it was great. It was really fun. And it was the first time I got to do a whole room as opposed to a window or my studio. Uh, this is a piece that was at Craft and Folk Art. Um, this is a wall work, and it's called Aretha's Window. And um, here's a little piece of wood from that piece. Be careful, because there's things sticking out. <laughs> um, you have to be careful. And people always say, don't you get splinters? Don't you get, you know, hurt yourself? Tennis shots? Uh, it's never knock on something. I injure myself more with my drill than any kind of wood product. Yeah, so this was, so I found this piece that they were, it was like lattice work. And it was painted this old funky color. And um, I passed it on my way to the studio one day. And then I passed it when I was coming home. I was still laying in the street. Pulled over, grabbed it, threw it in my car. Um, then I tore it apart and built this. And I call it Aretha's window because we, um, in the middle of me working on this piece, which again has the plexiglass with imagery drawing on the wood, um, we went to Memphis. And while we were in Memphis, we um, happened upon Aretha Franklin's house, where she was born. She moved away when she was like two. But um, we pulled up in front of the house, and, and I got out of the car hunting around for wood from Aretha's house. But nothing. I couldn't get anything, and it was all boarded up and everything like that. But I took a bunch of pictures, one of which was her window. And when I got back, I put it in. So that's Aretha's window from her house uh, when she was a baby. <laughs> Does she know that you that she, she has a piece of art? She does not know. Oh, I haven't told her yet. She needs to Next time know. we talk, I'll, I'll let her know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is a, a, a piece in similar vein. Um, I call this piece, uh, what did I call this piece? Elevation. Oh, Elevation, right. yeah. Same idea, found wood, built up, up you know, and um, with the imagery, with the plexi, and then uh, the string. I use, I use a little very fine hemp string for this piece. What pictures or um, images do you want? Is it with elevation, or they, I feel like I see, and maybe I'm making this up, there's clouds in there? Um, I'm maybe trying to, oh, to elevate. some of yeah. these, yeah. is there that, or what images did you put in this for to be named elevation? Oh, that's, that's interesting, because I think of elevation as um, in architectural drawings. And yet, elevate is to go up. So I liked the play on those two Term, you know, on, on the terms, but um, yeah, I didn't ever stop to consider. Yes, there there are cloud. There, there's that's some cloud imagery too. Yeah, I mean, uh, they're just random pieces that I thought looked good together. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is more current work where I ended up taking pieces that uh, were plexi that I painted and I actually broke them apart. I just came in one day because I needed room in my studio, and I broke a lot of my old work, and I was done with it. And so I took those pieces and, and made some wall work. So a lot of these are just parts of old pieces that are just jumbled in there together. Um, here's another one. Um, and again, they took up less space than the, than the buildings, the structures. So I, I started hanging these on my wall. Here I get into the painting of the wood. Um, I, most recently, I've been adding color by using paint into it, and I feel ready to do that. Um, so I'm having fun with that. And I used to be a painter. I mean, I did paint. I, I know how to paint. So it's nice to come back to it, but I just wasn't ready before. But now, um, yeah, so that's... Susan, is the, the bottom panel, the, like the, the bottom half of the, yeah, it, what is that? Is that's that, wood. That's so this is a piece of wood that I painted and drew on. Oh. And then I attached other wood to it and an image that I have also worked the back of and plexiglass. And then I put it all together and then I wrap string around it to, again, just kind of contain it, I love it. and hold it. Thank you. Uh, again, a current piece. Um, 
you know, I, I love architecture, and so I I'm, I'm never wanted to be an architect because it's too precise. So I do the next thing, which is pretend I'm building buildings that would not hold up. I'm like, you know, Simon Rodia is a huge uh, inspiration to me as well. Uh, this is probably, I think, one of my most current pieces that I, yeah, I just, this, I found a bunch of plexiglass that's cut like that. And it's like, oh God, that's, yes, because I'm, I'm into, you know, I, I'm into the whole thing now with these cranes. And, you know, I drive around and I see these big crane structures in the sky that they're building with it. It's just, they're amazing to me. And that just kind of looked like that. So I added color to this piece. I'm, I'm putting the orange in there and, and uh, the blues. And, um, this is my most current piece, yeah. So here, again, I'm doing the thing where I'm leaving the wood because I really love how the grain plays into the design of the piece. Um, and the voyeurism takes place, if you look carefully, I don't know if you can see in the shot, but there's a naked woman sitting in the, there's my breast right there. That's, it all comes back. You see that? Look, oh, I just saw it. It's not me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, but that's like the voyeurist, uh, voyeuristic quality of it is that like there could be some person sitting in that apartment just kind of like looking out and, you know, in her own thoughts and we're looking up at her. Um, yeah, that's interesting that we end with that. I think that's it. Wait. Yeah, that's the last of it. Um, wait, I want to just pass around to these pieces. This you have to be very careful of. <laughs> But this is a piece from Virginia's house. Okay, so just be very careful. Get your tetanus shots. Um, this excites me to no end. I can't tell you. This is, this is the beautiful knot hole in that. Um, here is a sample of just simple plywood. Actually, I had cut this off of something else. But I just love the imperfection of, look at how I cut, like that. I mean, it's, you know, it's just, I love, it's cool, it's not straight, and yet look at the lines that are going on in the grain. It's just, it's, it's, it's candy to me. <laughs> um, lastly, this is probably one of my favorite pieces of wood, right here. <laughs> this was found in our neighborhood. Uh, there was a garage that was being torn down, and I gathered a bunch of these pieces from the roofer as he was throwing it down. I was standing right under him with my car, just loading up the pieces. And um, I've not used this in a piece because I love it so much. It's a beautiful piece, and you can't, maybe a little bit now, but it has a smell, and it did have a smell of old garage <laughs> and I, it just, it was like, oh god, it does still, it's like an old man kind of book smell, yeah, in a garage. It smells like my closet. Yeah, but um, oh, I just, so that, you know, I can just sit with that and be happy, so thank you.